Hi, I'm Monique Johnson, the Interim Assistant Curator of European Art at the AGO. I'm going to take you on a walk through the Fudger Gallery, where we highlight European paintings and sculpture from the 1800s. 19th century Europe was a time of tremendous social and political upheaval, which artists responded to with remarkable creative range. The gallery features works by artists following the traditions of academic art, as well as impressionist paintings with their distinctly modern themes and radically loose brushwork. Next to an entry to the gallery, we encounter this moody yet hopeful painting called L'Orage, or The Storm, by Diaz de la Peña, the leading figure in the Barbizon School, a group of French artists who in their painterly treatment of landscape were predecessors to the Impressionists. John Singer Sargent was one of the preeminent portraitists of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Here we see his brilliant handling of light and talent for capturing the status and spirit of his sitter, the celebrated violinist Joseph Joachim. I love this work by the English artist Mary Ann Alabaster. It's meta in the best ways possible. Titled The Artist's Painting Room, it's a self-portrait of Alabaster pictured in the process of creating a self-portrait. Alabaster persevered in the face of societal and familial restrictions against becoming an artist. And this wonderful painting from 1830 was her first publicly exhibited work. Monsieur's Zuxis Choisissant des Modèles is another painting about representation. Here, a classical subject, the ancient Greek artist, choosing features among several models to make up as Helen of Troy, is rendered in an academic style. Jean-Léon Jérôme's The Antique Pottery Painter offers a fascinating take on the Paragone debate, or the age-old rivalry among the arts, as the Latin title tells us that the artist pictured here breathes life into sculpture with her brightly colored paints. This painting is fittingly placed next to this charming polychrome or painted sculpture in terracotta by the French artist Prosper d'Epinay. It's a portrait of the artist's son, Georges, lovingly rendered in human scale with incredible attention given to his fabulous 16th century costume. From this fanciful dress, we move on to Maximilien Luce's laborers who have removed their shirts as they are pile driving on the sunny banks of the pointillistic Seine. In Camille Pissarro's painting, Le Pont Bordieu in Rouen, Rainy Weather, we get a zoomed out view of the labor and industrial frenzy that so drastically transformed urban centers in the late 19th century. Edgar Degas' Woman at Her Bath presents us with an intimate and private moment. Despite the sensuality of the subject and colors, labor is likewise present in the figure of the maid who pours water over the woman's back. Moving toward the other side of the gallery, Paul Gauguin's carved wooden sculpture is inspired by the ancient Polynesian myth of Hina, the goddess of the moon, and Fatu, the god of earth, engaged in dialogue about life, death, and eternity. Interestingly, this sculpture also has traces of paint. Claude Monet's gorgeous view of the coastline at Etretat is obviously a painting with an unusual shape, and there's actually a great story behind this. Monet painted it onto a wardrobe door at an inn where he was staying in 1885. We suspect that the work was offered in exchange for his bill. Along the west wall, we have a springtime landscape from Pissarro's farm at Eragny, and this beautiful new acquisition of Caibot's blue irises and foxgloves from his expertly tended garden, a passion he shared, of course, with Claude Monet, at his home in the suburbs of Paris. In Paul Cezanne's interior of a forest, the entire canvas is taken up with verdant trees. Here, depth is suggested not through a perspectival rendering of space, but through color and tonal contrast as Cezanne edges towards abstraction. Compare this to Renoir's scene above, 
of La Seine à Chateau. Vincent van Gogh's Woman with a Spade is a small but powerful study of the single figure laboring on the land. A visitor favorite, John William Waterhouse's I Am Half Sick of Shadows, said the Lady of Shalott from 1915, is a magnificently detailed depiction of a dramatic moment from Alfred Lord Tennyson's poem. The Lady of Shalott, confined by a curse to her tower, takes a break from endlessly weaving images of the world she can only look at through a reflection of the mirror. This pause anticipates the psychological turning point when she fulfills the curse by looking directly at the world towards Sir Lancelot, precipitating her demise. Finally, we turn to Eugène Boudin's La Plage de Trouville à l'heure du bain. Instead of social isolation, here we see a crowd of fashionable tourists chatting in their crinolines on this beach in Normandy. Thanks for joining me on this tour of European art from the 1800s on view in the Fudger Gallery at the AGO.